How are you, Andrew? I'm doing well, Rich. A pleasure to have you on. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate that uh, you called in. Uh, how have the last 72 hours been for you, Andrew? It's been uh, it's been eventful. I think just trying to settle in as quickly as possible and, and make the transition. But you know, fortunately, it's a, it seems like a great team. It seems like their uh, intentions are to to make the new guys as comfortable as possible and help them win games. I think that that's the priority and. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's what we want to be a part of. Well, what was it like to, you know, pitch for the Yankees while you were hearing that you may go, you may not go, you're definitely not going, and then you go? Uh, what was that like for you? It was a little distracting. I think it was tough. You know, you get pretty attached to your teammates and you know the, the city and all that stuff, and you, know, you get comfortable playing for a certain team. I, I really enjoyed playing for the Yankees. I like playing in the American League East. You probably don't hear that very often, but it was just, uh, you know, one of those things where – I knew it was a possibility. I had zero leverage. I didn't have any no trade protection or anything like that. So as long as it was a possibility, they were going to talk about it. And the media turned out to be right. It ended up happening. And, you know, for me, it doesn't do any good to look back on it negatively or, or complain about it because it's out of my control and it's happened. It's over with. And, you know, the the best thing about it is I'm on a, on a team now that has big expectations this year and, and is going the right direction well, and, and certainly, you know, has – a chance to win well that's a positive no doubt about that and i'm sure you are glad to be in that position no question but if you had the trade protection would you have exacted it to stay put in new york you know i don't know it's a tough question i think uh you know it, it's not something that really matters because i didn't have it I, I i certainly had an attachment to the yankees there were a lot of reasons i wanted to go there is the reasons i signed there and you know um there's it's tough leaving that situation. I, my, my plan was to sign with the Yankees for four years and, and hopefully you know, get a championship there. But the reality is I'm a, I'm a Cleveland Indian now, and you know, the, the goal is to win a, a championship with the Indians. And I think uh, you know, there's a, certainly a possibility of that, and it's a, a pretty exciting one at that. Well, the, the atmosphere in the Yankees clubhouse after you were traded, Andrew, uh, the reports were it was like a funeral in there. Um, what was it like in that locker room last several weeks with so many veterans, including some with World Series resumes, uh, to struggle in the manner that, that you had in the first half of the season? You know, I think uh, we actually played pretty well in the, the middle portion of the season. We just got off to a slow start, and it was just maybe a little bit too too big of a hole to dig ourselves out of. But, you know, it was tough. I think it was a real professional group. I think we really liked each other and got along. And, you know, I think once the Chapman trade was made, we knew that, you know, anything was possible. And, you know, certainly, you know, like I said, I felt like we played pretty well right around the break. The problem was we were playing really good teams and, and winning series wasn't enough. We had to go on a run and, and a, a pretty good winning streak at that and weren't able to pull it off. So, you know, you, you make relationships. I think it's a, a group of guys that have played together for a long time. And, you know, fortunately, I think I fit in pretty well that, you know, it's tough to see those guys go, but that's the reality of baseball. And, you know, this is my sixth team, so I've done it before, and wow. uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know these guys here better. And, you know, they're doing something right here the way they play. Andrew Miller joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And in that regard, as you mentioned, this is your sixth team. Um, but with you being in a new surrounding, at least there's a familiar face in the skipper in Terry Francona, who was your first manager with the Red Sox. What was that like reuniting with him, Andrew? It's nice. I think, you know, from a comfort level, having a little bit of experience with him. But, you know, ultimately, I think just, you know, even if I didn't know Tito, uh, coming to play for a manager like that is, you know, that's as good as it gets. All the players rave about him. The the, the team is obviously playing well under his, you know, guidance. And he's just, uh, he keeps things loose. The players are, you know, in charge of a lot of what goes on and there's a lot of freedom and as long as you show up on time and play hard and play right you know he's going to be behind you and that's uh that's what we look for as players and you know he's as good at anybody as, as good as anybody at that when you say that the players are, are in charge in that regard is that you, you mean like the major league shrines that are in the in the clubhouse in honor <laughs> of major league is that what you're referring to andrew <laughs> I, I haven't seen that yet if it's uh it's put away in somebody's locker i, okay. I haven't I haven't found it yet, but uh, but yeah, I think Tito does a pretty good job of letting the players have the clubhouse and, and run things that you know that fits that that group of guys. So, you know, I think uh, his his track record shows that he knows how to handle guys and, and put teams in good positions. And just excited to be a part of that. Who's the toughest guy you have to face when you come out of that pen in Major League Baseball right now, Andrew? Who's that guy? Shoot, there's so many guys. I think uh, you know this year. You know, obviously the David Ortiz farewell tour is going on. I think having to face him is uh, mm. is not a lot of fun. He's pretty locked in. He's trying to finish up strong, and 
you know, I, I think fortunately he's done with the uh, Cleveland portion of the schedule, but, <laughs> you know, he's as good as they come. You know, the lineups now are so good. You go to places like Baltimore and Toronto and Boston, and just top to bottom, it's just unbelievable. It's seemingly one all-star after another, and, you know, these guys are all hitting 300, and they've got 20 homers at the break. So it, it's not easy. I think fortunately we got a good lineup on our side, but, you know, it's uh, it, it's certainly, you know, a, a tough division over there. Um, you know, I come here, unfortunately, you got to look at Detroit. You got those guys in the middle of the lineup. You got Kinsler and Cabrera and Martinez. So, no matter where you go, you can't get away from it, and you know, just find a way to get it done as best as possible. Andrew Miller joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. A couple things going on around the league. One of the hot button subjects today is what Joey Votto. I don't know if you saw it last night, Andrew, going into the stands, and he sort of grabbed at the uh, the jersey of a fan or shirt of a fan to remind him whose team he's rooting for because he prevented him from <laughs> catching a foul ball. What did you think of that, Andrew? I, I heard you guys talking about it over the break, so I went and checked it out. I think it's cool. I think anytime you get some fan interaction, it looked like he apologized. He sent a sign ball over or something. So, you know, I think it, it's certainly something that fan will never forget. You know, hopefully, you know, the players don't go too far. But, you know, the experience for, for the the fans at the ballpark is uh, something we care about. And, you know, something like that's got to be a pretty special memory, I hope. I hope it's not worse than that from what I saw. But it seemed like a neat experience. It seemed like a little apology. And, uh, you know, he got a signed Joey Votto ball, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it seemed like it might have been a purple nurple at the very worst, Andrew, quite frankly. <laughs> You know, a little twister it might be what will happen, you know. Um, and then and then fans who, who are in the stands yelling, an umpire ejected a fan last night in Philadelphia. Do you hear fans when you're out there on the mound? Be honest. You know, we do. In, in certain places, you can hear them better than others. Honestly, you, you almost hear them more in places where there's fewer fans because there's uh, less competition for noise. But, you know, I think most of us try to ignore it. There's a few guys that are pretty good at, at kind of talking back and popping off and getting a little conversation going. But. You know, we hear it. I think certainly, you know, there's times when people go too far and they're, you know, they're, they're trying too hard. But for the most part, it's not bad. It's, you know, you're the visiting team. You, you take a little ribbing. But, you know, it sounds like last night the guy was going pretty far. And, <laughs> you know, we want, we, we want the game to be clean. We want people to be able to bring their kids and, and have a good time and, you know, a family experience as well. But, uh, you know, I think for the most part, it's not too bad. But it sounds like Bob Davidson was was making a pretty good point last night. What would you think of the idea the commissioner wants to move games along? He would limit the number of pitching changes to be made in a game. What do you think of that idea, Andrew? You know, I don't know. I don't like it. I think that there's – I think I'm all for the game being more more enjoyable to watch, more enjoyable to attend, and I think that, you know, that's our responsibility to, to sell a better product in a sense. But I don't think that's the answer. I think there's a lot of ways to do it. I think it's good that we're trying to figure that out. That's certainly, you know, we need to be conscious of – what the fans are asking for. I don't think getting rid of relief pitchers or, or cutting down, that's the way to go. I think, you know, there, there's certainly ways we can go about speeding up the game, and it's good that we're trying, but I don't think that's the answer. So you're just one inch shorter than LeBron. Do you think if the Cavs gave you a call, Andrew, what's your game like? What's your game? Can you post up? Can you shoot like love from the three-point arc? What do you have, Andrew? Uh, not a very good game. I'm uh, all lefty, and I'm a shooter. I, I, I don't think I could uh, rebound against any of those guys. I don't have a whole lot of body weight to, to throw around down there, but – Basketball wasn't really my sport. I probably should have stuck with it a little bit longer. I didn't realize I was going to be this tall, but I think uh, the Cavaliers will be fine without me. Okay, because, you know, I mean, I know they've, <laughs> they've won the championship. You're there, and the Indians are in first place. The Browns are starting right now. Do you, do you feel that in that town at all in the first couple of days you've been there? You feel that? Yeah, you know, I came here as a visitor earlier this season, and it seemed like everywhere you went, fans were wearing Cavaliers gear, and, you know, everybody was talking about what the parade was like, so... You know, I think it's pretty exciting. A, a, a city that had been in such a, a, I guess, a tidal drought or whatever you want to call it to, to get to experience it. I think they're thirsty for more. And, you know, I think it, it puts the pressure on us to, to give them another one. And I think, uh, you know, the amount of excitement and the fun that those guys had celebrating is something that, you know, certainly kind of can drive us and, and we can look forward to trying to experience. Well, you're from Florida. Are you a football guy, too? You have a, you have a team? Big time. I grew up in Gainesville, so I'm a I'm a big time you know college football Florida Gator fan. Okay. Uh, you know that's as good as it gets. I grew up in the Steve Spurrier era, so mm -hmm. that's what I that's what I uh, root and pull for. And then unfortunately, uh, the Jags in the NFL somehow ended up with them, and that's kind huh. of been a tough go the last few years. So you're a Jaguars guy, Andrew Miller? Can you believe it? They they exist. They're out there in the wild. No, look now. I mean Bortles and and Hearns and Robinson and Denard and. You know, T.J. Yeldon, Chris Ivory, yeah, that's not too bad. On Miles Jack just today is getting reps with the first-team defense, Andrew. 
Yeah, what? they say they're getting better. We'll, we'll see. I'll believe it when I see it. I think, uh, you know, it's been a, a pretty tough run since uh, the, the Mark Burnell and Fred Taylor era ended. But, okay. you know, it's, uh, you know, we're looking forward to all those draft picks paying off. Okay. That way. Okay. And so you're a Tebow guy. That means you're a Tebow guy, Andrew? You know what? I think he got a tough rap in the NFL. I think, uh, you know, he might not have been the best, uh, thrown the best spiral or, or read the defenses the best, but the guy's a winner. And, uh, you know, I, I wish he got a little bit more of a chance. I think the, the politics of it all kind of got in the way, unfortunately. And, you know, I think it's unfortunate. I think there's guys that haven't had his success that have gotten longer opportunities. But, you know, that's uh, I think he kind of signed up for that, too. So a little separate of that. But, hey, he won two national championships. I saw him win in the Orange Bowl uh, against uh, Oklahoma. So right. no complaints on the Tim Tebow side. So I would say that's a yes. You're a Tebow guy. I would, I'll take that as a yes. You're a Tim yeah, Tebow. sure. Okay, Put me down. Okay. okay. Andrew, thanks for, jo uh, for joining the show. Uh, please call, call back in. I really enjoyed our conversation. Good luck, and we'll see, uh, we'll see you down the road in the playoffs probably. Yeah, sounds good. That's the plan. Thank you, guys. You got it. That's Andrew Miller. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.